Thank you for being here. I see some uh, familiar familiar names, so it's good to know that you also attended the morning session. Um, right, so let's skip the EIT uh, presentation. Let's also skip the poll because I see some familiar names. And let uh, let me start by introducing the session and the uh, and the speakers that we have for for today. So. What do we have on the menu? Wait, let me just. So we have again three EIT urban mobility supported startups. Um, each one will have seven minutes to pitch plus three minutes of Q and A uh, after its presentation. Of course, that if there are further questions, don't worry. We have time after the after all the presentations to have directed conversations or also breakout rooms. Um, I remind you that this you can still book one on one meetings through the platform. It's just a matter of going through your agenda and browsing for the participants. So we will be starting with Carlos from Evio presenting smart uh, smart charging for EV. Then we will move on to Areti presenting traffic management tools, and we'll top the session with Lisa, who will be presenting NEMI solution for demand responsive transport in rural areas. So let's break on then, Carlos. We, we will start with Carlos. So Carlos is an engineer with more than 20 years of experience. He worked in infrastructure, energy and mobility sectors, and he was a board member for several institutes and funds. He's currently the co-founder and CEO of Evio. Carlos, we know that electric vehicles are a, uh, are a trend as an alter alternative for internal combustion vehicles. And we also know that they present a more sustainable alternative to combustion combustion ones with up to 70% of the life cycle CO2 emission reduction. However, they also present some challenges to the grid, whether in a business to consumer or a vehicle to grid perspective. So please tell us how is Evio working on this and how can you make EV charging, if it's smart charging simple. Please, Carlos, take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, thank, you. thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to, to share my, my screen just a moment. So uh, I'm Carlos Almeida. I'm the CEO of uh, EVIO Electrical Mobility, and we develop a platform that allows you to, to manage the electrical vehicle charging ecosystem. Um, it, is, it is an intelligent and agnostic uh, platform, so it's compatible with all the brands and models of uh, charging stations, and it promotes sustainable charging, connecting the, the worlds of mobility and uh, energy. <laughs> We developed a platform to allow us to interact with all the stakeholders in an ecosystem or a city. So it, it, the platform can connect business inside the city, uh, utilities, public authorities, uh, CPOs, and also uh, private uh, uh, customers. So if we look at uh, this integrated approach, we can see that uh, we have, can have uh, different types of electrical vehicles, not only cars, but also uh, bicycles or other types of um, of uh, electrical vehicles. I'm going to to present you also a project that we did with boats inside the city, and it allows you to manage all the charging stations across the the city and uh, have access to data and analytics. Analytics allows also people who invest on charging station to share and monetize charging stations without being a, a CPO. So we, we extend these functionalities also to uh, companies and uh, small business. So they are also allowed to, to, to share their charging station with the, with the, the public. So one of the examples, as I, I said, is the, the one that we did in Aveiro municipality. So uh, this is a consortium. We ac we exchanged the the way these uh, touristic boats um, are powered. They they used to be uh, by diesel, and now we installed second life batteries on these boats, and we installed charging stations on the piers. So our platform is managing the ecosystem for the Aveiro municipality uh, and allows the drivers of these boats to charge and uh, pay for the electricity they use to, to, to show around the city to tourists. This is one of the examples that is uh, not only cars. Uh, we are also able to, to have uh, bicycles on our platform. So for us, if it is an electrical vehicle and it needs to charge, and if the charger has OCPP and is intelligent, we are able to connect the charger to the, to the platform. 
And uh, uh, by doing this, we provide uh, um, to people in the city our uh, app that is available on the stars and allows the citizens to interact with the assets and with the chargers and uh, we create the, the ecosystem for this. So if we look at the advantages for, 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 uh, for a city uh, to implement our, our platform, it assures universal access and interoperability between charging stations and also helps attracting investment to the network from private investors and companies. So with this, you can accelerate the growth of a charging network on your city because it reduces the costs to new operators. They don't need to invest on a backend, on a platform. They can just invest and connect the charging station to the platform. It's quite easy, so it lowers the investment from their side. And we provide tools for the city to monitor the network and also for the, the, the operators to do the same. And we also provide ways for the city to collect data uh, in, and it, it is possible to, in, to integrate with other system, uh, city systems and, and put together all the information. So it, we, if you use the mobile app, you can also have free features for your citizens. Uh, it's, as I said, uh, hardware agnostic. Uh, it's really easy and fast uh, to integrate charging stations on the platform. You can set up different types of users with different types of tariffs and you can combine these uh, these uh, assets to the charging stations. Uh, it also has integrated payments uh, 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 methods like a credit card and others, and also um, it calculates the carbon footprint. So it allows you to stimulate and um, accelerate this um, green way of charging electrical vehicles. So it really makes the day to day of uh, the drivers easier because it helps them to find charging stations available on the city, not only the ones provided by CPOs, but also private charging stations that are shared by other parties and they are available on the app. Uh, it also uh, allows you to get, receive notifications when the charging station is available or when you finish um, charging your electrical vehicle, receive a notification and you can go there and take out your car. So this is a, a, an important tool that helps you um, to, to, to complement public investment because it will accelerate uh, private investment on your city. So this is a way to accelerate the shift to sustainable and intelligent mobility. Uh, we have received several awards for innovation and also for sustainability in the last years. And um, well, I'm available for questions. Thank you very much, Carlos. Very interesting, uh, this new approach on uh, smart charging. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I invite you to write them over to the chat or just raise your hand and I will, well, you can just speak up. If not, I also remind you to, you can still book one-on-one -on -one meeting rooms, so you can just head over to the platform and book your one-on-one -on -one -on -one meeting with, uh, with Carlos. Okay, so if there's no further questions, let's move on to our um, second presentation of the day. Uh, deep traffic and will be Areti who will be presenting. So Areti holds a Master of Science in Civil and Transport Engineering and she has experience in, a, in intelligent transport systems, connected vehicles, technologies and traffic management projects. He's currently the Chief Operating Officer at Deep Traffic. Areti, we know that in Europe, um, private cars are the dominant uh, transportation method. Uh, depending on the country, they can range from 57 to 81 percentage of model share, and it has an, an average occupation rate of under two people per car. So this is of course worrying, and it generates unsustainable mobility habits that lead to a high volume of cars on the roads, traffic, and consequently decreased air quality and road safety. So please tell us how is the traffic working to mitigate this impact. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Ariti. Thank you for the introduction. Hello to everyone. I will uh, serve my screen. I hope you all can see my presentation. So I'm representing our uh, startup company, Deep Traffic. Uh, we are um, a deep tech innovation uh, company, a spin-off of the Center of Research and Technology um, 
Central in Hellas, and basically we are uh, focusing on the provision of uh, traffic management solutions for uh, connected vehicle technologies. So what is the main challenge that we are trying to address and uh, tackle in our um, company? Uh, perhaps there is the idea in many cities and many other organizations and authorities to enhance the efficiency of the conventional traffic management and at the same time try to um, exploit conventional vehicles together with technologies from connected and automated vehicles which are very increasing nowadays both in uh, research programs and also in other initiatives that take place in uh, the cities. Um, so if anyone is interested in uh, and willing to make uh, the city safer, greener and more sustainable and wants to do this by improving road safety, traffic efficiency and also improving the environmental indicators and factors, uh, we have tried to uh, develop a solution that can achieve all these um, indicators by traffic management uh, technologies. Um, basically, what we are trying to deal with is to give you a solution if you find it very difficult to uh, find sufficiently skilled personnel to operate your traffic management center uh, technologies, automating the procedures in the traffic management centers, if you have um, costs that have to do with the road stride infrastructure, both operation and maintenance, and perhaps you have data that you collect from your sisters from the road network, and and there is um, a lack of knowledge in order what to do with this data and how to exploit them. Uh, our solution is a dynamic traffic management tool and platform that exploits connected and automated vehicle technologies in order to tackle various traffic conditions such as uh, traffic congestion, increase uh, road safety and pollution in cities and highways and also try to um, improve these indicators. So the added value that we provide from our solution is that we provide automation intelligence to the existing traffic management systems. We can connect uh, the traffic management system with automated mobility uh, features, introduce traffic management as a service concept and also exploit the multi-source data that is uh, collected. Um, our product, if Traffic 121, is comprised of four uh, different modules. Uh, we have the Scenario Manager, which is the basic platform tool for the Traffic Management Center and uh, the road operator to activate and deactivate traffic management strategies that have um, the capabilities of connected vehicles. There is a dashboard for the visualization of all the data that are collected. Uh, here, the staff can watch real time the traffic network through indicators, um, maps and other um, diagrams. There is the CADS broker, which is the entity that broadcasts the messages to the connected vehicles real time uh, throughout all the network that is of interest. And of course, we have the mobile application that is used from the drivers of the key vehicles and they have the ability to receive and see in the user interfaces in real time the messages that we provide. Um, let's move on to the two use cases that we have uh, selected for the presentation today. So first, it's the city of Wroclaw in Poland, where we have implemented our solution. Um, the city of Wroclaw had some very specific characteristics and challenges that needed to be dealt with. So there were traffic congestion um, in the weekdays, afternoon hours, in significant increases in travel times, and there were also a big amount of road work and road closures that were ongoing. So all the city had to deal with these challenges and we collaborated with them, with the city municipality and also the Road Traffic Management Authority. We customized and implemented our solution and the capabilities that we offered to them was to um, 
monitor in real time all the network uh, conditions, activate dynamic traffic management scenarios that were related to their specific needs and what they needed to uh, tackle in the road network. We provided the services of roadworks warning and in vehicle signage. Um, these were provided through our Android mobile application, which was translated and um, um, modified to their language and to the specific needs of the city drivers. And of course, we collected all the data in order to have real time and historic visualization of it and calculate also key performance indicators. Uh, here you can see some um, visualizations of our um, implementation of our tool in the city of Roslov. So you can see how the traffic incidents were visualized in our um, platform in real time and how the uh, drivers were able to receive the information in the mobile application. Uh, the next use case is uh, the city of Ioannina, a city in Greece. Uh, here, the city had to deal with a sort of different uh, challenges. So the basic needs were the improvement of road safety in the network of the city. Uh, there was a need for update and optimization of the traffic lights programs and overall the city needed to uh, improve the road network traffic and efficiency and performance. Uh, once again, we customized our tool and adapted it to the specific needs of the city. Um, here, the solution that we provided um, was basically offering traffic management strategies, activation and deactivation according to the specific problems that uh, the city network uh, deals with and wanted to tackle. Um, once again, there was the capability for um, road network traffic monitoring. The services that we provided here were GLOSA in vehicle signage, and we were also collecting floating car data from the connected vehicles. Uh, there were the calculation of specific KPIs that the city needed to know, such as traffic volume, speeds, and other synthetic KPIs. Uh, we also had a collaboration and interconnection uh, to our tool with the City Traffic Management Center. And um, our last task was also to provide uh, an optimization in the traffic lights uh, program in order to um, improve the network efficiency and have a smoother flow and um, balance in the loading of the road network. According to the feedback and the collaboration and engagement that we had with the two cities um, during the execution of our projects, um, their um, feedback was positive and the benefits that we um, highlighted was that uh, they were capable of uh, monitoring the network 24-7 in real conditions, able to provide real-time intervention and face any traffic problems through the dynamic traffic management of CATS services, activating them and deactivating them. Um, there was also a very good proportion of real-time information provision to individual drivers. Um, they were very um, um, satisfied from the calculation of the indicators and their visualization of them in our tool. And also we tried to manage to see up to 80% optimization of the traffic network conditions and a very high also increase in the level of service in the entire network. Um, moreover, during the implementation of our tool, there was no need for new or extra hardware needs, purchases and costs related to that. And also we managed to assess some uh, socioeconomic benefits that were dealt with uh, reduction in fuel consumption and emissions of the vehicles that use our application. There was also a reduction in the average travel times in the road network, in the road accidents, and regarding to the needs in the traffic management center, um, there were no extra needs, uh, big needs for new personnel or new staff that needed to work to the uh, systems and um, have some specific skills. So with this, I close my presentation of our tool and our two use cases. And this is our contact information. If you have any questions, uh, please. Thank you very much, Areti, for your presentation. Once again, I invite you to ask your questions. Just raise your hand or paste them on the comments 
reflection. Uh, very interesting presentation. I mean, it's it's good that we're making an effort to decrease to increase road safety and decrease uh, pollution. It's exciting, exciting for the future. Okay. Uh, so if there's no questions, we'll move over to our uh, last speaker of the day. Um, we're lucky to have uh, Lisa here presenting uh, NEMI. So Lisa holds a bachelor's degree in European languages and business from Leeds Beckett University in the UK. Um, Lisa also has a market research background, working in leading UK and Spanish, Spanish agencies, and also worked with the Innovation Centre in Transport at UPC. Lisa is currently the Chief Marketing Officer at NEMI. Lisa, we know that mobility in rural areas is a tricky business, um, especially as it presents significant challenges for the economic sustainability of a convenient public transport provision. Um, we also know that low popular population density in rural regions results in fewer economic and social opportunities. Therefore, it's, it's essential to make public transport an, uh, an inclusive service for vulnerable groups. Um, so please tell us how NEMI can work to improve this. Thank you, Lisa. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Rafael, for that kind introduction. Um, so as uh, you quite rightly said, so I'm uh, Lisa Grace. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer um, at NEMI, which is a Barcelona-based uh, demand responsive um, platform. So without further ado, I will share my screen now. We can't see it yet. You see my screen? Not yet. No? No. Mm, hold on one second. Now? Yes, Perfect. there we go. Okay, okay, good. Um, thanks for that. Okay, so um, NEMI is uh, a standalone software tool uh, which aims to uh, provide a, a platform which we can digitalize and flexibilize and optimize the public transport um, services. Rafael mentioned uh, in peri-urban peri or rural areas, um, connectivity issues, uh, completing the first and last mile uh, are key. And um, there isn't always uh, the necessary connections to get you to a public transport hub. And that can actually um, cause ensuing problems in terms of access to essential services, healthcare, job opportunities, study opportunities, and can have a knock on effect um, in terms of social inclusion for those people who are not able um, to uh, complete that first and last mile with active mobility and don't have uh, a, a private vehicle. Okay, so that's the kind of overall aim um, of NEMI. Here we've got a beautiful picture of a quintessential village that literally could be, uh, it could be the UK, um, it could be Poland, the Baltics, um, it could be anywhere because the rural transport connectivity issues we have are pretty much the same across, across Europe. Um, it doesn't really matter uh, where you are, uh, and this really is the true um, the true Europe um, of, of regions, right? So it's not about countries and boundaries. It's about having uh, common issues um, across the types of, of geography that you're that you're operating in. So just to recap over what we would say could be the issues of a fixed public line uh, transport system in rural areas. So uh, it's a typical rural bus that you might have. I don't know one bus every three or four hours that's no good to anybody so very few schedules very limited territorial coverage um, and quite long travel times you've got to remember that outside of the cities the distance is traveled um, increased dramatically okay that will lead to low demand so people just aren't happy to sit on a bus um, for an hour and a half to get to a to b when they could use their private vehicle or it might just put people off actually um, going so that um, study opportunity or that job uh, in a certain place but it requires you to have such a lengthy journey you may just not choose to take up that offer okay that would, could then lead to uh, what we would term uh, a depressed social uh, socioeconomic activity 
uh, it could lead to social exclusion for certain collectives, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that increases the burden, the pressure uh, on the already scarce um, public resources um, to maintain uh, these rural um, bus services up and running, uh, and we end up in what we call a downward spiral. So on-demand transport can actually break that cycle by um, putting and optimizing uh, bus routes, which means um, the bus only goes through the routes and stops at those stops where there are reservations. So we have shorter travel times. And um, we can also look at in including some stops on demand, which means some places that are really out of the way could have a stop place there. And we only go there maybe twice a week to pick up somebody. And um, we're not actually going around the houses and, um, and driving more kilometers every single route, okay? So that could um, impulse more demand. OK, uh, it could help uh, increase the socioeconomic activity of those area and bring back those people who've been previously excluded. So that could be teenagers who don't have a driving license yet, who are living in a rural area. And um, it could be single got households. It could be stay at home mums. Um, it could be older people um, who don't have a private vehicle or who actually don't have their driving license renewed for health reasons. OK, so all of this um, will increase um, the, the, the demand. Uh, and we should see uh, a flowing, uh, healthy social inclusion picture uh, where we have uh, on-demand transport, okay? So the solution um, is uh, digitalizing the bus operator's offering. It's flexibilizing it, so it could be a, demand, a land that's placed completely on demand, or it could be one that is a regular line just with some request stops or just with uh, some uh, requests during weekends, for example, or during off-peak times, okay? So it doesn't have to be all on demand. It's not all, all or nothing um, situa uh, solution, okay? So I wanted to bring this alive and say, hey, let's meet Marisa. So Marisa is one of uh, Lagoroche's residents. This is a, a service we have running uh, in, the north of, uh, in the north of Catalonia. She's a retired teacher. She's widowed. And she's not feeling particularly confident behind the wheel, and she stopped driving. OK, so she has to rely on somebody else to get her around to her essential hospital appointments. OK, we'd like to say that Melissa is unique. Uh, she's one of a kind. She certainly is one of a kind to her grandson. Um, but it wouldn't be strictly true because we know that there is a huge uh, aging population problem in Spain. We know that uh, the people who are currently uh, here in this bulge running up and I'm actually focusing on the females. OK, you will see that. The amount of females we have in the higher stages of the pyramid is scarily high. Okay, so we've got a ticking time bond in terms of the demographic and um, profile. And these are examples from Spain, but there are other examples across Europe. So this area isn't particularly unique either. Like we said earlier, that pretty village could be pretty much anywhere. And you can see here in terms of the uh, degree of urbanization in Europe that the rural mobility connectivity issue is pretty common no matter where you go, okay? So even in the UK or the Netherlands, which are renowned for being incredibly uh, densely populated, they also have certain pockets um, that are not connected, okay? So, hey, one day Marissa, she hears about NEMI and she heads down to the church hall and we're running an information center and that literally can change her life, okay? That can bring uh, via a user app, OK, so she just needs to download an application onto a mobile. Um, it's all very straightforward. This is the, the driver up in the back office that we use. And these are a couple of pictures of images uh, that of routes that could be optimized. This is uh, the route that used to go around in Marisa's village. And this is what it looks like when it's optimized. So it's shorter travel times, uh, more stops, more buses. And there are some uh, there are some savings if you choose to look at the savings, but we would prefer to focus on better access to jobs and services. Um, just to finish up, I've got about 20 seconds left. Um, these are this, uh, the areas where NEMI is currently operating services at the moment. And this is the kind of breakdown or the technical slide on the service that we uh, included for um, for Marisa. This is where she's living. Um, you can see that the aggregation of passengers per trip. So bums on seats um, on a bus, we're getting close to four. Uh, we've got uh, averaging about almost 30 users um, per day. Um, if you did want to look at savings, so we've got about 68% savings uh, by putting this route on demand. Um, and despite an older profile of person living in this area, we've actually got 80% of those bookings being made on the app. 
Okay. Um, so welcome to Garochad with our inclusive, uh, sustainable, efficient digital bus service. So we're able to connect people to schools, doctors, dentists, work opportunities, you name it. Um, and we're putting more bus stops all the way around these villages so people who do have active mobility issues can get there in less than literally three minutes walking distance. And that's all for me. Thank you very much, Lisa. And pleasure to meet uh, Marisa. <laughs> I'm happy that she now can take the bus and go wherever. wherever. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question in the chat, um, and the question was, what about elderly people who do not own smartphones or do not know how to use them? So, so could you repeat the question? Uh, what about elderly people who do not own smartphones or do not know how to use them? Yeah, so um, the 80% of people who are reserving on the app, that means there are 20% who aren't reserving on the app. So um, there's also an opportunity to reserve um, by telephone. OK, so uh, we don't operate a call center. We're a, we're a, we're a mobility app. Uh, we don't have a call center, but um, all the services that, yeah, all the services that we're operating um, here in Catalonia, um, the bus operator uh, runs a, a reservation service. OK, so the people can call up, make a reservation, and then that is fed in via the back office and into the, uh, into the algorithm. So it just it just joins the other reservations. Okay, yeah. So we have uh, telephone uh, telephone reservations. So oh, okay, thank you very much. I think that was uh, clear. Okay, so if uh, there is no further questions, uh, I am left then to thank uh, Lisa and Areti and Carlos for their presentations, and hopefully you'll also join us later for the closing remarks. Or if not, you can book your bilateral meetings for the platform. Um, so feel, feel feel free to drop me a message or an email if needed. And yeah, again, uh, thank you very much, and I wish everyone a good afternoon. Thank you.